Our presentation is on galaxies, presented by Anna, Caitlin, and Roxana. There are three types of galaxies, spiral, elliptical, and irregular. Spiral galaxies are made up 77%, and ellipticals are made up of 20%, and irregular are made up of 3%. Spiral galaxies, just as the graph states, they make up 77% of our galaxies. A spiral galaxy looks like flat white disks with yellowish bulges at their centers. The disks are filled with cool gas and dust interspersed with hotter ionized gas and usually display beautiful spiral arms. The spiral arms are a wave of star formation caused by a wave of density spreading outward through the disk of the galaxy. Um, the spiral galaxy have three components. The bulge is a spherical structure found in the center of the galaxy, which contains older stars. The disk is made up of dust, gas, and, and it's where like the spiral arms form. The halo is a galaxy's loose spherical structure located around the bulge, and also contains globular clusters. Um, some characteristics um, contain abundant clouds of cool gas and dust. Our rare and central regions of galaxy clusters have significant ongoing star formation, have a flattened disk of stars, contain many bright hot stars, and are more bluish in color. Um, there's also two, st two types. Um, varied spiral galaxies, there is a bar of material that runs through the bulge that the arms emerge from. Um, ordinary spirals, the arms originate directly from the bulge, and these both types are like given classifications according to how tightly their arms spiral. Elliptical galaxies are the second most abundant in the universe, making up 20% of all known galaxies. Unlike spiral galaxies, ellipticals only have spheroidal components, which includes the bulge and halo, but not the disk with spiral arms. They get their name from the round shape of the bulge and halo, which form an ellipse. Elliptical galaxies often look red or yellow in color, and much like the spheroidal components of spiral galaxies, only contain old red stars. There are no hot, young, blue stars because elliptical galaxies contain very little dust or cool gas needed for new star formation. There is little or no ongoing star formation in elliptical galaxies, just like the halo and bulge in our own galaxy. Elliptical galaxies can vary greatly in size, ranging anywhere from giant to dwarf. Giant elliptical galaxies are relatively rare and are among the most massive in the universe. Most other large galaxies are usually spirals. Smaller elliptical galaxies are the most common for ellipticals, but are still not as small as dwarfs. Dwarf elliptical galaxies have fewer than 1 billion stars, and are often found ne near large spiral galaxies. For example, over a dozen dwarf galaxies belong to our local group. Edwin Hubble invented a system that classifies and organizes galaxies based on their type and characteristics. On the left of the diagram are the elliptical galaxies, designated by the letter E and a number. The larger the number, the flatter the elliptical galaxy. These classifications can range from E0 to E7. An E0 galaxy is basically a sphere, while an E7 is highly elongated. The right of the diagram shows the two different types of spiral galaxies. Ordinary, designated by S, and Bard, designated by SB. The S and SB are then followed by a lowercase letter A, B, or C, depending on the tightness of the spiral. So what is a, an irregular galaxy? Like the graph showed, they make up about 3% of the total galaxies. They do not contain very many similarities between each other. They result from the collision between two or more different galaxies. They are found in groups or clusters where the collisions between galaxies would be very common, and they usually are about 10 to the 8th to 10 to the 10th solar masses. Type 1 irregular galaxies are a single galaxy with a strange appearance, so they do not have any similar shape like the elliptical or spiral galaxies. They have a large percentage of young stars. They show a very luminous nebulae that can also be found in spiral galaxies. They have disks and bulges and are closely, closely related to the appearance of spiral galaxies. The disks, however, do not have a spiral structure. The bulges are located away from the galactic center. They are very primitive galaxies lacking in heavier elements, so they don't 
contain anything higher than or larger than hydrogen or helium. They have hydrogen clouds, which when heated glow and form a luminous nebulae. For type two irregular galaxies, they are often called the disturbing or interacting galaxies, which means they result from the combination of two or more different galaxies. The most common way that they are formed is from gravitational interaction between neighboring galaxies. Since galaxies exist in clusters instead of being evenly spaced throughout the galaxy, it is more possible for these galaxies to collide. An antennae galaxy, which is a type 2 irregular galaxy, is actually the best known. I like to think of it as the embryo galaxy because it looks pretty close to an embryonic structure. They are huge in size, and which have two cores separated by 65,200 light years. A, light, a lot of star formation occurs at the core. Another common type of an irregular galaxy is the cartwheel galaxy. This happened when a small galaxy passed through the middle of a big spiral galaxy, which caused gas and dust to compress. The wave of particles produced moved to the outside of the edges of the galaxies, leaving behind newborn stars. Billions of stars were created during this collision. A whirlpool galaxy was caused by the collision of two disk galaxies, so it has a slight spiral shape. One galaxy is located in the middle of the whirlpool, while the other one is on the outer edge. Starburst galaxies shine bright because there are many newborn stars within a short amount of time, which is a thousand times more than normal. The supply of gas and dust for star formation will be used up in about 10 to the 8th years, so these galaxies are relatively short-lived. The star formation can be caused by either tidal interactions between galaxies that pass close to one another, merging galaxies, or the presence of a galactic bar. They are formed in central regions of the galaxy, and the massive stars formed emit ultraviolet radiation, which when absorbed is absorbed by gas and re-emitted as infrared. So they are the most luminous infrared objects in the universe. Supernova and stellar winds blow away gas, halting star formation. Sextans A is, has an odd square shape and it's a tiny dwarf irregular galaxy located in the same local group as the Milky Way. It is about 5,000 light years across in size and located 4.3 million light years away from Earth, making it one of the farthest away in the local group. We know that galaxies form in pretty much the same basic way. Gas is drawn by gravity into dense regions of space and forms protogalactic clouds that will condense further to form galaxies. So why do they differ in shape? There are three explanations, rotation, density, and collision. Rotation and density indicate differences in birth, condi birth conditions, while collisions refer to later interactions between galaxies. So how does rotation affect the shape of a galaxy? If there is a significant amount of angular momentum in the protogalactic cloud as it collapses, it will rotate quickly and form a disk. This will create a spiral galaxy. Density can also influence the type of galaxy made. If a protogalactic cloud has a high gas density, it is able to cool more quickly, which will lead to rapid star formation. The star formation will use up most of the gas before it can turn into a disk. This would result in an elliptical galaxy. However, this only explains differences made from birth conditions. Later interactions between galaxies, namely collisions, can have an impact on galaxy types. Models made on collisions show how two spiral galaxies can actually collide to form an elliptical or irregular galaxy. Collisions are much more likely to happen in regions of space where galaxies are closer together. This explains why elliptical galaxies are common in clusters of galaxies where they are closer together. One example of this collision is the galaxy NGC 1316. This image taken from NASA's Hubble Space Telescope shows the giant elliptical galaxy. It was formed when two gas-rich spiral galaxies met in the major collision. Hubble's instruments were able to measure the red star clusters in this galaxy and determine that the two spiral galaxies merged a few billion years ago. 
So today we talked about the three different types of galaxies, spiral, elliptical, and irregular. I hope you have enjoyed our presentation, and thank you for listening.